Hi, you all right? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, not bad. What's going on? Not much, really. Um, train, train today, get ready to go for a run after this. Have Just you doing been what I can, on? really. Yeah, have you, have you been getting on in quarantine? Um, struggled with it the first few weeks. It was uh, just like the routine norm is like so busy. Yeah. And I've got, um, I'm always all, all over the show. Like we work and like, I tr normally train twice a day, Monday to Friday. So um, I just had loads of free time and not knowing what to do with it. So got myself a punch bag and that and um, kept myself busy with that. Good stuff. Good to hear. I think a lot of the guys that I was interviewing, it kind of made them sort of assess their home living areas. And they were like, oh, I could totally put a bag there or I could totally yeah. <laughs> do something there. So they're kind of like capitalising on everything, I suppose. Yeah, I had nothing. Like, I, all my training really was done at the gym. Yeah. Um, like, when, whenever I wanted to do any exercises, before I got my uh, bag up, everything had to just be body weight stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't have any equipment. I've never... I never really needed any, yeah. but um, got loads now, so started doing me, doing a few PTs and that. Well, I noticed that on your Instagram the last couple of weeks, I've seen you working with a couple of guys, so is this kind of like a little side hustle to get money, yeah, you know, or yeah. what, what's, what's the idea with it? Because of, of how much I train, really, and I'm uh, doing sports science at university as well. Oh, no way, deadly, that's so, brilliant. Um, so that, it's, one of the, it's a way to earn a living with... Mm -hmm. Like being able to fit my own schedule around it, really. Yeah. There's not a lot I can do because I have that much on. And I've got my little girl now as well, so. Yeah. Just um, just so that I can do my own hours, really. So what what um what year are you in 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 uni? So uni is like college. We would yeah, say college yeah. over here. So what what year are you in? Um, I've just just finished my first one now. Okay. So, and how um, long is it for? How many years will you have to do? Three for? years. Oh, no way. Okay, yeah, so it's yeah. a proper course then. Yeah. That's yeah, good. So what, what was the decision to go into that? Just um, with boxing, it's one of those things where like, you could have one fight and you see loads of people where they, like, say, for some reason, like, they didn't, they weren't financially, like, set up for life. You need, like, a bit of a something to fall back on, like, you don't want to be stuck, like, so it's one of them sports where one tough fight and you might not be able to box again. Yeah. So, just for, um, well, with me, having my little girl, mm -hmm. just uh, a bit of a backup, really. Do you think, have you always been kind of a little bit sort of older than your years, a little bit mature or what, no, like, not, from the not, birth of your daughter? not really, no. Um, my mum, my like, has always been... Like believed a lot in that it's a good idea and that yeah. and um, convinced me. <laughs> yeah, well, it's you're very wise, and you're very wise as well that you actually listened because there's not many like eighteen, yeah. <laughs> nineteen year olds that that do listen. <laughs> Some of that will go well with me boxing as well, because um, everything everything I'm learning there, it's um, all all like geared around stuff I can do myself. Well, you're proof as well, aren't you? I always say that with like boxers that. For, for to do personal training or to work with people showing them what they do like you're yeah. you're you're your own brand so you're proof that what you do works yeah you know, yeah right? yeah definitely so do you have any aspirations like in terms of having it as like a proper business or opening your own gym or is yeah, it just maybe a little side in, in the future um because i'm i'm confident that um i'll be able to do well in boxing and yeah. sort myself out um, for life through that, but um, it's just it's just one of them you never know, do you? And yeah, it's not like with what I'm doing now, it's not like it has to be one or the other. I can do both. So yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So let's talk about the boxing. I think the most anticipated question in terms of your own career is when's the pro debut? When are you going to turn over? Are you sick of being asked? <laughs> Well, I get asked it all the time, and um, yeah. I'd turn if it was down to me. I'd turn pro on my birthday, but uh, <laughs> well, as soon as I turned eighteen, but I, I wasn't ready. Just uh, got a, I've got all my faith in the people around me, my dad and Matt, yeah. and um, my amateur gym. Like we all, like, I know they've all got they know 
what's best for me and that. And I can't. I don't think it's far off at all now. Uh, I do a lot of sparring with pros, and um, I do. I think I perform a lot better mm-hmm. against pro fighters just because of my style. Yeah. I've got, um, all, all the way I box is definitely going to be. Um, I'll do better as a professional, and probably, probably looking um, maybe early next year or something. Don't know. Just uh, it's hard to say at the minute because just because of everything that's going on. Yeah. Um, so would you have anything have had anything planned amateur wise for now like was there something scheduled for you uh, not really um, we were just taking things as, as they came so I just boxed in the ABAs mm-hmm. and um, like I didn't, really, didn't even get a chance to get back in the gym after it because yeah. I think uh, I boxed like three or four days before um, we got put in the lockdown so um yeah, we'd not really discussed it, but it was never far off. It was just about getting as many as many fights in as I could, really, mm-hmm. get um, the experience, because um, I've, I've sparred pros for years, and I've always been, I've always held my own, and sometimes more than held my own. It's not, it weren't a matter of, um, like, turning pro when I'm ready, because I weren't far behind a lot of pros. Mm-hmm. It's just... Um, I'd rather turn pro and be able to impress people than turn pro yeah. and just just be holding me own. So, the, yeah. the want to to impress people um, when you turn pro, is that to do with your own goals or is it because obviously you know of the family that you come from with obviously your dad, Ricky, and, and your uncle, Matthew? Uh, I know I'm like, because of who my dad and Matt are, I will put, I will get opportunities that um, yeah. that a lot of people might not, but um, just think it's all it's all good having these opportunities. But if you've not got the ability to, um, like they can't fight for me, can they? So yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've, like I need to be able to grab them with both hands. Mm-hmm. Really, don't don't want to rush into anything. Absolutely, it's, it's very wise. But I remember I, I watched um, an interview of yours recently, and um, you said something very, um, something that that I, I clicked onto. That I was like, God, that that's a really, it's insightful for your age, and you seem to from it. I got an idea that you had a, a, a great sort of um, understanding of the sport, and it was a question in terms of uh, developing your own style. And you yeah. said that you know it's all well and good to copy or imitate someone that you aspire to be like style. But once you're in there and you're in the kind of firing line, you can't rely on that. You no, have to you can't your be own a, style. Like you, you, you need to, like the concentration you need. It's on another level. You can't be thinking whilst whilst you're in there. Oh, I need to do this. Like, oh, I'll try this because this will look like like someone who I someone who I look up to. Mm. You, you can't be thinking about anything other than the person in front of you. So, um, I just, when I box I just go in and try and do my own thing I don't uh, don't really worry about anything else did you ever want to aspire to go the like Olympic race or kind of the team G- team GB race no not really um just because like since a really early age I've known that I've not got the amateur style like yeah. uh, fencing sort of stuff and I've always known I'd do better as a professional it was just about when the right time is Mm-hmm. Like that bags of time now, and I think I'm not, not far off. Yeah, um, being ready for it now. You obviously, you know, you you've grown up in the sports, and you've obviously been around gyms and and just the 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 the, the lifestyle of boxing for for your life. You know, um, can you remember a moment where you know you decided or the way you you knew that boxing was something that you were passionate about? Um, I, I started like when I was really young, I was about 11, mm. and um, I just went down to the local gym, because I'd always done little bits with uh, with my dad and Matt, just like every now and then, yeah. but I, was, I never took it serious, like it, it was just uh, something to do, like it, I, I never thought, oh I'll be a boxer at first, and then I went down to the local gym, but um, I still weren't like overly interested, I enjoyed it, but that was about it. So then I stopped and had a, like a few years out, and then I went there. Uh, I just thought I'll, I'll give it another go. Um, went to Northside in uh, Clayton and 
just loved it then. I had um, mm. lo- loads of fights for them. Um, and then went to the gym I'm at now, Roy Richardson's. Um, I've just yeah, loved it ever since. What a legend he is. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> is he still is he still working away? Is he still at the gym? Yeah, yeah, he's always at the gym. Never misses it. It's just, like he's uh, in his what, late eighties now? Yeah, he's always there, Incredible. still gives gives his advice out and uh, yeah, it's good he's good to have around the gym. Yeah, knows out knows out. Yeah. Um still gives me a crack and all. <laughs> does he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good stuff. Good to hear. <laughs> good to hear he's keeping everyone in check. But in terms then of like your first fight, was it again you going to your coach and saying, "Look, I want, I think I'm ready, I want to go in there," or was it your coaches? No, my coaches um, matched me up. I, I was like, because I'd done a bit before. It, it worked like I was starting from like nothing. Yeah, like, I did. I did know what I was. Like, I, I weren't like, I weren't like dead good or anything. But I was, um, I was more than like starting from scratch. So I. Look like the stuff I'd done with my dad and Matt, so I was had a bit of a head start to mm-hmm. from people who'd had no fights. But um, yeah, I was ready. I think I'd been in the gym about um, three or four months or something, and then I got my first fight. I boxed in real, uh, real town hall, and got the win. Was there a fight where something switched in you where you went, okay, I have the bug now, or you know, the sort of like the fighter uh, came through before even. My first fight was just being in the gym. Like when I, I think it was because I was a bit older, because I'd been in the gym when I was about eleven and twelve before I had a few years off, and I think it was just better, better that I was a bit older and like more focused on wanting to do one thing. Because when I was when I first started, it was just I was trying a bit of everything. Yeah. But um, yeah, as soon, soon as I went back to the gym, I think I was about fifteen. Uh, did you ever do it. any other? Did you ever do any other sports? Not nothing. Um, nothing serious. Just mm. just like messing about with my mates. Really, uh, did like played rugby for school. Like did a bit of bit of running and stuff, and uh, played football for Attersley. But no, I was shy at football. <laughs> 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 Who do you support now? Obviously, City, is it? Yeah, definitely City. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, what was I going to say to you? What are some of your early earliest memories? In what terms when, of when was the boxing? Yeah, I can't really like people ask me what I can remember about my dad and Matt fighting. Yeah, but, um, well, you, was, what, you really would have been young. only like, would you've been what ten when your dad retired? When my dad had his comeback fight, I think I was about eleven or twelve. Mm. But um, I can remember bits of being in a uh, better bodies when my dad was training and Matt was at the Phoenix camp. But I just remember, like, going in. I don't remember the boxing side of it. Yeah. Really, no. Was it important for you to have Matt as part of your career going forward? Like, now, like, obviously, you have your amateur club, but in terms of working alongside Matt and your dad, like, was it important for you to have them as part of your, your career going forward? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've noticed a massive change. I was, uh, I was improving a lot. Um, before I started working with them, because I haven't, I haven't um, always worked with them as much as I do now. It's only mm-hmm. been the last uh, couple of years, but um, I noticed a massive change when it was um, when they were working on specific stuff. Because obviously, at the amateur gym, like the coaches are, are all really good, but like they've got that many kids. Yeah, like, you can't always get as much one on one time. Yeah. And like so, I was, I was coming on loads. They they still bring me on a lot, but uh, it's when I was like, I was pinpointing things I need to work on and getting the basics sorted and stuff. Um, yeah, that's that's when like the penny dropped a bit where mm. I thought um, I could do well at it. Absolutely, it's an interesting time at the moment because obviously with the coronavirus and with the the um, the postponement of the Olympics for one and all these kind of like um, big yeah. amateur um, uh, competitions as well that have been going on this year or that were scheduled for this year and a big conversation that's out there is what do you know the the Team GB guys that were kind of this was their last shot I suppose like you know in the Olympics what do they do next do they continue do they wait till next year do they wait another four years or do they turn pro? 
And it, it leads to the conversation of, you know, what if, if successful amateurs, what makes a successful pro? Because we don't always see it. We see guys no, that no. win gold all the time at amateur and they turn over and they just don't do well. Yeah. So what's your, what's your um, understanding of it? What do you think makes a successful turnover? I think um, like you can have all the skills in the world, but uh, the physical side of it with the professionals is a, makes a big difference. If you haven't got like, a bit of strength behind you as well. Mm. I think you'll only get so far. You see loads of skillful, uh, skillful boxers that just don't always, don't, don't quite make it just because you like someone who's probably not as talented, but like can rough them up or bully them sometimes. Yeah. I think you need a bit more. I think the amateurs is you need all skill really to be the top amateur and then. I think you'd do better in the professionals if you have a bit of, in, like, in between. Mm-hmm. You know, a bit of both. Absolutely. I agree with you. Also, who was I talking to? I think it was David Caldwell that we were discussing it with. And he had said that, he thought that um, one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of successful amateurs make when they turn pro is that they lose the ability to learn or they lose the ability to... Because they've, they've come from such a peak in their amateur career, they've won yeah. everything. And then when you go pro, you're kind of starting again. You're you're back yeah, at the yeah. bottom, you know. Yeah, definitely. I just think, um, like with me, when like when I turn pro, I think I've been training um, like a professional for a long time now. Like the amount of train, and I've been mixing like because I'm mixing with both pros and amateurs. I think where a lot of people have time. When they turn over, they'll have they might have a few months in the gym yeah. to um, make a bit of a transition. Where I, I think I've uh, already done a lot of that. Yes, um, no, I think I, I mean I'm used to it, and when I spar pros, I, I do feel the difference. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Do Do you feel is there a pressure on you for when you do turn pro? Because naturally, you know, because of who your dad is, because of who your uncle is, there's sort of like an anticipation where I think the boxing community are. So behind you, because your 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 dad and your uncle are so well loved, they kind yeah. of can't wait to be able to love you as well and to put you up on that pedestal. Yeah, there will be, but I just think I, like, I train hard enough, and I think I think I've got the ability to um, to handle the pressure, and I think I'm I'll be good enough to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think also if you weren't good, do you think that they would step in and tell you yeah, you're definitely. not good enough? Yeah, yeah. both brutally honest. <laughs> Uh, too honest sometimes, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they, def- they definitely tell me. Um, and l- like you say, all the eyes will be on me, so they wouldn't they wouldn't let me um, go in front of those like all them eyes and make a tit mm. of myself. <laughs> like if if I didn't have it, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and that's funny that you say, you know, because the one thing about family members, you know, you don't have to be working alongside them or training no, alongside no. them, just in general. Yeah. They'll tell you the truth, you know, as yeah, brutally definitely. honest as it, yeah. as it might be. It's, 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 uh, so that's why it's... But I imagine as well, it's a comfort knowing that, you know, because obviously I don't need to, to, to explain it to you. I'm sure you're well aware of the business of boxing and yeah. stuff, you know, we're, trusting people is a massive part of, of the, the business side of it and sometimes you trust the wrong people and sometimes yeah, and you don't. They'll be, I can I can just tell from the bits of like bits of being around boxing that there's a lot of ass kisses. And, oh yes. Um, my dad and Matt uh, definitely aren't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's you know, and it, it, it stands to you as well because one thing that is like so clear again with, with any of the media stuff you've done is that you know you're very humble and very a lot of humility and just down to earth and just like I want to work yeah. hard and you know so that's that's definitely obviously a quality that people love with, yeah. with, with your family as well, well I, I haven't done anything myself yet so well that, <laughs> I, and that's a fair that's a very fair point but yeah you could say but I do you know, know I do know um, that I am going to I do know I've yes. got the ability to do it to yeah. work hard enough Absolutely, yeah. No, it's 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 um like that's a fair point that you make, but it would be, you know, you could you could it'd be very easy for you to be strutting around Manchester yeah, and be yeah. like, I'm Ricky Hatton's son. You know <laughs> what I mean? Because it's done by others. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's 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 a good quality to have to to have your feet on the ground. Yeah. 
Is that important? Do you do you want to kind of you know? I don't really. Um, like, I don't really feel, think about it. It's just how, yeah. I, how I am naturally. I don't. Um, I don't think like what what like my dad and Matt have done. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't think that makes me a good fighter just because like what yeah. they've done. It, it doesn't make. It's not always the case. You, mm. see, you see some fighters and like not always as good as like as people in the in the families. Yeah. It's not just a given that I'll be able to fight because they can. I think mm -hmm. because I've worked hard enough for it um, and I will do for enough time to make it myself. Absolutely. When you look at, you know, turning pro and the career that you'll hopefully have, what are the goals? I think I can, uh, as, a, as a pro, I think I'll be able to go all the way, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, one of them was sports boxing where I think you have to think that. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Too hard a game to be um, setting your, setting the bar low. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, whatever I do, I know I'll have, I'll have done the best I can because uh, I train I train hard enough, and I know I couldn't do any couldn't train any harder. Even like with the quarantine, I've uh, kept on top of things. I don't uh, I won't have any regrets at the end of it anyway. Mm. What's the biggest? I suppose, life lesson that boxing has taught you? Just, um, if you dedicate yourself and uh, and work hard enough, like, even if people aren't the most talented, mm. uh, you can still get there. You, you've just got to give it your all. Yeah, absolutely. That's across the board, isn't it? It's not just yeah. boxing. It's good advice for... Just... Yeah, it's just, um, like, you see, look, there's loads of fighters where you think, Jesus, you wouldn't you wouldn't have thought a few years ago that they'd have like done the got to where they are and yeah. you just know what why they're there. Yeah, absolutely. In terms of your own inspiration, who inspired you growing up? Who did you look up to? Um, obviously, my dad and Matt a lot because mm. they were like they. If it weren't for them, I probably wouldn't be interested in. in well, I'd be interested, but I yeah. don't think I'd uh, have such a close interest. Um, so, but I've got. I have, have to say those two. But um, I like all the Manchester fighters from from years ago, like uh, Jamie Moore, uh, Michael mm. Gomez, like a lot of them. Uh, Anthony Crawler as well. Yeah, it's Maz. I, I was actually having um, who did I have on last night? Bradley Skeet, and he was yeah. talking about um, growing up and and being a, a massive fan of Prince Nazim. And yeah. then finally, when he turned pro, getting the opportunity to meet him and to, to speak with him and to be friends with him. And we, then we were talking about like how impactful this, the kind of the, the few champions like your dad, like Naz, like Jamie Moore, like yeah. Nigel Ben, those few fighters, how they've gone on to inspire like an entire generation of young fighters. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how it works, right? Yeah, it's because it's so relatable. Yes. Um, because you think, well, if they've done it, why why can't I? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Did you ever feel, in terms of like the mental side of fighting and the mindset, you know, like it's it's very clear that you're very resilient and you're very mature and you're very, you know, you know what you want and dedicated to the sport. Yeah. But is that something that you had to kind of develop over time in terms of having this like, rock solid mindset that you know that you can be great and you're putting in the work and it's going to pay off yeah i've always i've always known that um that like, i'll have to work hard just because i started a lot later than mm. um a lot of fighters i've not got the experience that uh some like people are fighting like people on the same similar amount of fights as me I don't really like, don't really get matched against them. It's, uh, yeah. it's hard to get the fights. So I'm, I normally fight people who might have had twice the fights as me. And um, I don't like. Sometimes I've lost a couple of them, but I've never lost by much. And they've normally been uh, close where they could have gone either way. Yeah. So I know because I've been catching up a bit. I've had to work hard on them, and I know um, I must be doing something right if I'm at the same level as these 
uh, these fighters already. Mm. Is it three titles that you have now? I've got two Northwest. Yeah. And I won the National Novice title. What years did you win those ago. in? Um, I think the I won one in, one Northwest in two thousand and seventeen. I think it was. Um, and then that, I think I won the Novices in two thousand and seventeen, and then a uh, Northwest last year. How was that? Yeah, it's why everyone gets into boxing, isn't it? They want to yeah. win, want to win titles. Yeah, but it's, I suppose it's like a, it's one of those things, like something that you can take home that shows, or that it kind of it's like yeah, a yeah. reminder of the hard work that you've put in. Yeah, definitely. You know that kind of thing. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Have you ever have you ever fought in Ireland? No, never. I was I was going to. I was um, I was meant to. Uh, one of my dad's fighters, Chris Blaine, he had yeah. arranged for me to fight on a on a on a show near him. I think it was his dad had organised, but uh, that was meant to be in May, but obviously um, that got cancelled. Yeah, I was looking forward to it though. I know we'll have to get you have to come over. Have yeah, to fight. there's there's a couple there's a couple of good lads over this way. I was in Dublin um, New Year. No way. Went Wait. over for a weekend with my mates. Yeah, the top time. No way. What did yeah. you do? Just go on the beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Where did you go? Um, we stayed at, I think it's called Clifton Court Hotel. Yeah. Just right there, yeah. Temple it's, Bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Clifton Court Hotel is on a, it's on Camden Street. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you walk the whole way down and then it's Temple Bar. Yeah, yeah. Temple Bar is like, I don't Nine know. Nine pound a pint. Yeah, <laughs> really expensive. You won't Jesus. catch me. You won't find me getting a pint of Guinness there. No way. I go the other side of town where it's only four fifty. But yeah, um... I wish someone had told me about that. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> the next time you're over, send me a text. I'll tell you where to go for all the cheap pints. Yeah, I will do. But um, no, it's good. Did you get recognised? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, in yeah. some places. Because you're is. the image of your dad. Yeah, shame in it. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I like because again, like your your dad is so well loved over here as well. You know, we kind of consider him a little bit Irish in some capacity. You know. Yeah. No, I did. I did get recognised a bit, but um, yeah, I had, I had a really good time. Good, good to hear. I'm glad. I'm glad you didn't have a bad time. <laughs> That'd be terrible. And um, while we were talking, everyone has an opportunity to uh, send a question. So I'm going to go into the question box now and see what yeah. everyone wants to ask in a few seconds. Um, oh, Connor Ben. Connor has said, "Looking forward to watching your career. What weight will you turn pro at?" Um, Obviously, probably, very similar backgrounds yourself and Connor having yeah, two definitely. well-known dads. Um, probably say lightweight. Um, at the start of before the lockdown, I was thinking because I box now at sixty kilo. Yeah, which is on like even. I think uh, in the professionals, I think lightweight sixty one, or a bit a little bit heavier by a couple of pounds. So I thought I might have been able to do super feather, but um, seeing how much I'm weighing now, and how much I've got, to, where it looks like I can lose weight from, I can't see it. So probably a uh, probably be a lightweight, mm. and, um, maybe maybe go up to light well when I like as I get a bit older, fill out a bit. And this is all obviously with your with your with your college work. This is super yeah, because it's all yeah. going towards helping you to yeah, definitely. you know go towards your your goals with with staying fit. Do you find it hard to to stay on track with your diet and stuff? Or are you quite sensible? Um, I have been like recently. Normally, I've I've struggled a bit, to put a bit of weight on. But are you um, excused now in quarantine? We're all after yeah, that yeah. bit of timber. <laughs> I've, just, I've just because I um. I put quite a bit of weight on when I got injured, and yeah. then I just remember that being a right ball eight, like, getting it off. So <laughs> I thought I didn't fancy that again. It's not worth it, so it's not. No, no. <laughs> right, no I wanted, because um, I'd had time out with injury, uh, and I'd got a bit of momentum going again. And then obviously this happened, so I don't want to waste any more time. Was it, was it your wrist? Was it one of your wrists that was gone? It was my elbow. Oh, your elbow. Yeah, it does right. to my elbow. Uh, which I right, had some physio on it. It's fine. It's been fine for a for a while now. So good. Just didn't well, want to waste any more time. Yeah, exactly. And you're young as well, so that yeah. you, you'll you'll bounce back from that. Um, let's just have a look. Sorry. Oh, so Brad Ellis has asked um, thoughts on Danny Merle 
and how did your spars go? Because obviously that's a good question because in terms of your own age and people who've turned pro, Danny Morrow has uh, just turned pro. Yeah, yeah. I remember there was um, there were good spars. I, I was a bit, uh, bit like, he had a bit of weight, I had a bit of age, so it was yeah. like pretty even. Um, I had some good, good rounds with him. The tough lad, just, uh, quite clever and all. Yeah, they were good. Good to see that again as soon as we're um, back to normal because I know he's based in uh, Salford now, isn't he? With Jamie. Yeah, yeah, him and Dave so are I'm probably really def- well. definitely look to get a few more rounds here. Is it important for you to kind of not, I not supposed to be friends, but to have people of your own age group that are kind of in a similar situation as you like that with Danny, being able to spar him? He's just turned pro. Yeah. Um, I spoke to him there. He's he's, he's all right, lad, Danny. He's, yeah, I he don't is. know him that well, but seems all right. So, yeah, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't worry. You don't like, want to get too close to friends. anyone in boxing. In well, case, this uh... is this is it as well, you know. And it's the same <laughs> same with any kind of jobs. It's the same with media as well. You don't yeah. want to be like best mates with anyone. No, I think he's a bit heavier than me anyway. So, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Civil. <laughs> Right, let me have a look and see if we get one or two more here. Um, lots of people saying Manchester is red. Is it bollocks? <laughs> uh, lots of people obviously asking the same question, when are you turning pro? Um, uh, lots of people asking your favourite band, favourite music. Yeah, it'd have to be Oasis. Yes, my favourite. And yeah. actually, there's a question here. Fintan Richardson has asked, favourite Oasis song? Uh, I like Up in the Sky. Yeah, good. that's a good yeah. tune. <laughs> yeah. Are yeah you have, I mean, you've obviously favorite. met them. You've met Liam. Yeah, Nolan, I've met, um, met Noel a couple of times. Uh, met Liam once, but like, not properly. Only passed him once when I was with my dad. Didn't yeah. get a chance to speak to him, but... No That's way. on my bucket list. Uh, so I tell you, it's on my bucket list as well. <laughs> There's, um, I, well, I used to be in a band before I'd done this, and we actually supported um, a band that a band called Glass Vegas, who are a Scottish band. But at the time when we were on tour with them, they supported Oasis at Slane. This is like yeah. years ago now. <laughs> and I remember seeing it and just being like iconic moments. And another iconic moment is there is a... Uh, no lean walking your dad out to the ring. Yeah, like, yeah. Iconic moments yeah, in definitely. like British history. It's great. Really good. Right, uh, one more. And then I'll let you. Um, so two, there's two really good questions here and then I'll let you go, uh, Campbell. So one is uh, from Carlo Gerald's one and he's asked, you have a very similar style to your dad's. Was that a natural transition or something you worked on? Um. I have got a lot of similarities to him. I think it's just because we've uh, similar builds, and obviously, yeah. um, a lot of a lot of the strengths he had, I've got the same one. So I'm I'm fit and I'm strong, and uh, I eat well to the body. But uh, mm-hmm. I don't think we're exactly alike. I I think the way we box is a bit different. Like my dad used to do a lot of his work up close, where. I like a bit more range and like uh, a yeah. bit more mid range instead of the um, up up close stuff. Brilliant. Um, okay, last question is from Longy seventy three eighty six. He's asked, "Have you thought about your ring walk when you turn professional?" Yeah, I think I've thought about that since I was about ten. <laughs> that's like that's like one of those things, isn't it? Where you can just yeah. envision yourself like, like when the first time you put some gloves on. I think. Yeah. Didn't you picture that? Um, don't know, mate. I'd have to go with Blue Moon. Don't want to, don't want to have the same as my dad, but <laughs> you might, might have to there. Uh, um, you could get a little remix. I always like those, one, those, yeah, exactly. The, all yeah, those remixes yeah. that people have where it starts off with something real slow. And yeah, then they probably be Oasis. Yeah. That'd be a good one, Oris. Yeah, definitely. Do you think about the venue? What What's the goal of venue? Don't know, I'm, I'm not fussed, me. <laughs> yeah, anyway. No, anyway. It'd be good, it'd be good. Yeah. What's, what's your what's your favourite of your dad's walks in, walkouts? Um, I think the Costa Zoo one. Yeah. When you see the atmosphere 
Isn't he, doesn't he have a son now that's boxing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've into him. He's too big for me. I don't, <laughs> I don't fancy it. <laughs> Leave him alone. Yeah, yeah. Won't be causing him any mind, yeah. Middleweight, I think. Yeah, no, right, that's fairly big. All right, yeah. <laughs> um, but listen, thank you very much. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no problem. That was a good chat. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, yeah, looking forward to seeing what you do in the future. It's an exciting time for you. I wish you all the best with it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. No worries at all. All right. Talk Cheers. to you soon. Take it See easy. Bye-bye. See you later.